Hey guys, this is Pastor Tim Williams, lead pastor at City Church in the Treasure Coast. Thank you so much for the honor and privilege of coming into your home tonight for 7 on the 7. This is our nightly time of encouragement, our nightly time in God's Word, and our nightly time as the family of God uh, to just be praying at this time. We need to pray. I was looking at Psalm 4 earlier today, and it says this in verse 7. You have filled my heart with greater joy. This is God. God has filled our hearts with greater joy than when their grain and new wine abound. Verse 8, I will lie down and sleep in peace, for you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. And so what we realize during these times of anxiety, during these times of crisis, during these times of literal death taking place, is that God is our rock. He is our refuge. He is our safety, not this world. And so we want to encourage you to lean into God, especially during this time, but even when we believe we will come out of it. So join us every night at 7 o'clock. Pretty soon we're all getting back together in person. There's going to be a party. We believe it. We declare it. Amen. And we are trusting God for it. So I'm so excited tonight to have another amazing guest, another one of our amazing staff members. Uh, Pastor G is here with us. And um, I want him first to just introduce himself and tell you guys about what he does here at City Church. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Pastor G. I have the pleasure of leading student ministries here at City Church. And we meet here every single Wednesday night at 630. Uh, we have service, we have games, we have a ton of stuff for your young people from 6th grade all the way up into senior and high school. Um, and we just come here every single week. We connect, we have games, we have uh, small groups. We are so excited just to have your students be with us. So if you're free on 630 on at 6 30 on a Wednesday we would love to see you absolutely and so they're doing great things and Pastor Gene his wife and their kids um, we're just so excited that they're here with us and I've asked for him not just to come and introduce himself but I want to share a word of encouragement for you guys today so we're gonna press into the word and Pastor G is gonna share with us let's just pray Lord we just pray that you would let your word bring life peace that your word would bring healing today that your word would bring hope today as we again, Lord, lean into you and let your light shine in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor G. So I'm reminded in the word um, of this chapter in the book of Philippians chapter 4, where Paul's talking and he says this. He says in verse 6, be careful for nothing, but in everything, uh, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. And what God began to just show me as we're in this season of turmoil where there's a ton of stuff happening everywhere, man, he just began to show me is what you begin to focus on, you begin to magnify. What you begin to focus on, you give strength, power, and momentum to. And so God says this, Paul says this in verse 8 of the same chapter. He says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if they are or be of any virtue, then, man, focus on these things. Think on these things. And what the Lord has just been showing me is, man, do you give focus and time and effort to what I say about the situation? Because the more that we begin to put our minds on what the news is saying, on what the government's saying, we, we get it and we want you to be um, informed about what's going on, but man, begin to focus on what God says about the situation. Begin to think on things that are pure. Begin to think on things that are lovely. Begin to think on things you know of good report. God will begin to magnify those things, and when you see those things begin to get momentum in your life, man, the, your perspective when you go outside will be completely changed. It'll be completely different. And so God has just been laying on my heart. I remember even when I was younger, um, I ended up, I cut my thumb when I was a small kid with a butter knife. And I remember thinking instantly, as soon as I saw red, I was like, well, I'm going to die. It's over. You know, it's, it's done for me. And so as I began to, to focus on, you know, how bad the situation was as a kid, I even remember being heartbroken because my mother was laughing right. in the moment right. because I got cut with a butter knife and she was cracking up. She was like, you're going to be fine. It was because of the perspective that I had as I began to focus on the red and the blood that I saw, and it began to take my mind and I began to run way left going, it's over for me. But as the body of Christ, when we begin to think on things that appear, when we begin to think on what the word of God says in our lives about what we're going through, it gives us a whole new perspective. For instance, when Abraham was going through the situation with his son, man, he didn't get to see God as a provider 
until he got to the other side of the thing. That's right. And so when we get to the other side of this, we're going to know Jesus. We're going to know God and a whole new facet of who he is in our lives because he's going to give you new definition as you're walking through this with him. And so that's what I believe for us today is, man, allow God to give you new definition of who he is in your life and your relationship with him as you continue to walk this thing through. And I agree 100%. And you know, what is interesting with all of this is our perspective. Like it is hard even for our staff, even for us as pastors. I don't care what your profession is or what you do in life or who you are. It is hard not to feel like during this time, this is going to get worse. This is never going to end. This is going to get worse. This is never going to end. We're here tonight to declare Amen. we will get through this. Yeah. We will come through this, not in our strength, yeah. but in God's. You know, we, we studied Gideon for the weeks leading up to this happening. And the whole message was, you can't do this in your own strength. You have too many men. Yeah. And that's been us as America. You know, we've had too many uh, blessings. Yeah. We've had too many distractions. We've had too many, we can do it our way, Burger King. I'll have it my way. Right, right. That way. And we're learning in two weeks, we don't have it all under control. Yeah. We're learning that the invisible, the things we can't see, are just as real and just as important as the things that we have held on to. And so, you know, it's funny, we've been really serious in all of these seven on the sevens. We've had just light moments of maybe a little funny comment here and there. Yeah. But, and, and laughter is good for our souls as we go right. through this. We can't right. laugh at what's happening at all, yeah. but an occasional joke or an occasional thing. So I had to share, you're talking about your thumb. I had to share a good friend of mine growing up. Mm -hmm. She would pass, I'd pass out at the sight of blood. Yes. And so we did the worst thing to her when we were kids. We put ketchup on a knife <laughs> and we acted like we had cut ourselves with the ketchup and she came running into the room and saw the ketchup and she fell over and passed out. That would be something I She would passed <laughs> out. So listening to your mama laughing right, right. about, I couldn't help but think right. about that story. And so listen, church, let's get focused on the most important thing right. and that is God. He is the one that can overcome. Right. He is the one that reaches out in the storm and picks us up. Doesn't say, look what you got yourself into, but he reaches down, puts us in the boat, calms the storm, yeah. gets to the shore, heals the sick. He is the one that will give the doctors the ability, the right. wisdom, the knowledge, the intelligence miraculously yeah. to overcome this. And he is the one that we run to in every storm. Let's pray tonight. We're going to stretch out our hands. Pastor G, I want you to pray. Yeah. We're just going to have a closing prayer for everybody that's out there that's anxious. Right. And um, so stretch out your hand wherever you're at. We can't touch physically, but we can touch yeah. um, through God's spirit during this time. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for every family that is listening and that is sitting around with their household right now. God, we just pray in this very moment that, Lord, you begin to be magnified. Lord, just like you were on the serpent when you were held up as the Israelites were in the desert, God, Lord, as we look upon you, God, may our households be healed, may our families be healed, may our situations be taken care of. God, that as we continue to focus on you, Lord, Lord, may you be lifted up and may you just draw us closer to you, Father. God, we just thank you, Lord, that you are walking us through this hand in hand, God. Yes. Yes. We're walking stride in stride with you, Lord. We thank you for the promise of your word that we're going to get through this. We give you all the praise, all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you tonight for joining us for 7 on the 7. We'll be here with you every night through this crisis, through this time. Even beyond that, we'll be with you. And again, we're praying for you. We're looking out for you. God loves you so much. Amen. We love you guys too. Amen. Um, join us again tomorrow night for 7 on the 7. God bless you.